yeah, useful for you. So let's start in very short agenda. What uh, we sorry, will Lucas, talk. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, this mm -hmm. is not full screen. We can see two slides right now. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I know. Uh, yeah. So, so as I said, so short, very short introduction. Uh, what we will talk about. So here is the agenda. Uh, firstly, we were. I will make a little introduction to the problem. Why we are building something like this. And why we are, uh, yeah, work with Kafka Connect and chain data capture. Then I will show the demo how easily we can set up chain data capture on Azure SQL database. After that, what we will do is set up the Kafka Connect and Kafka. Well, of course, I will talk a bit what is Kafka Connect and why we are using Kafka Connect uh, with Kafka. And at the end, we will set up the connector. So our whole pipeline will take the data directly from the database in streaming fashion in near real time and put into the files on data lake storage. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. So yeah, why we are uh, yeah why we are building the data pipelines? Why we are building the data platform? Uh, yeah, the thing is that uh, imagine that we have an uh, organization and in this organization, we have multiple systems like HR, like sales system or the enterprise resource planning and so on. Uh, yeah, and we as a business owners would like to know everything about our business. And the problem here is that if we have many systems, it's very difficult to take the data from one and from another and join them to see the whole picture. Yeah, of course, you can do it in Excel, you can do it in very different tools or even via, uh, yeah, so simple tools like sometimes you send the data via email, yeah, but it's not the way. Uh, we generally speaking, we need to take the data from all our source system and put it into one place to have one version of true, as, as we said, yeah. So, um, yeah, and due to the fact that we have multiple source systems, uh, we need, of course, to get the data from them. Uh, and we have different data sources as well, because our vendors from our systems can say that, hey, I can allow to get the data from my system. I will give you the permission to connect to the database, right? To the mirror, da mirror database, because probably you, you won't get access to uh, to the database that is on production, but mirror is fine, yeah? And you have access to all of the data, right? Which is very good for us. And we will talk about it on, on our uh, presentation, yeah? But sometimes uh, the vendor can say, hey, I will not share with you the database, but I have the API and you can get the data via API. It's as well a good uh, solution. However, it can be limited because the API calls can be limited and uh, you don't have access to all of the data yeah, because you need to use the prepared the API. A uh, third option is the file. Yeah, Sometimes the vendor can say, hey, I don't have API. I, would, I, I won't give you the access to database, but I will send you the files every month or daily uh, with the summary of your sales. Uh, yeah, but we can use this file to load the data into the platform. And the last uh, that I am talking about, the last thing is the devices, because for example, if we have factory or solar farm or wind farm, uh, we have devices that have sensors and these sensors can send the data, for example, to message broker like Kafka, and we'll talk about the Kafka today or event hub. Uh, right, and we will talk about the first, uh, the first example, the database, because someone can tell, hey, why uh, we have any problem with database? You just connect the data and just get the data and that's all. But it's not, it's only partially true. Uh, in databases, usually you have uh, many records and many tables. And uh, to get the data and put it to another place like data lake, you need to obviously take the data from the database. But if you have a big table, and you would like to get the data um, to, to have actual data. Uh, the problem here is that uh, you won't be able to get whole table every time or in near real time. You need to get the data in incremental fashion. Yeah? But the thing is, 
uh, that sometimes it's very difficult to identify which record was modified or which record was inserted or deleted. Uh, you can say, of course, that we have the metadata columns. It's, it's, it's true. However, in not all of the cases, we have metadata columns. Uh, in not all databases, you have a possibility to identify it. Uh, what's more, even if you have uh, metadata columns, don't, you obviously need to create a SQL statement that will just query the billions of records and return only the increment records. Yeah, so we have some solutions for this, but it's not perfect always. Yeah. The second thing is that sometimes you would like to track the changes. For example, you have stores. And you, I mean, it's possible to change the size of the store and you would like to see uh, what looks the sales when the store was, uh, yeah, the, the size of the store was changed, yeah. And sometimes in databases, of course, as I said, you have the metadata columns, but if you don't have, you will need probably to collect all of the data, get all of the data and compare on the data platform, what is the new version of the record and what is old version of the record. Uh, this is the safe standard approach, uh, but fortunately for us, uh, we have a change data capture in most of the cases. It, it's very popular solution yeah? because change data capture is a uh, approach, is a feature of the database. It's not something that is only, for example, on Azure SQL database. It's present on Oracle, it's present on Postgres and MySQL. Uh, which is uh, good for us, yeah, because we can set up it on, on database. And change data capture is a feature that uh, allows us to uh, track the changes. So if the record is inserted, you will know that this record was inserted at this timestamp. If the record was modified, you will get information that this is the old value of the record and this is the new uh, new value of specific columns, yeah? It's based at least on, of course, on Azure SQL database on transactional log. So um, yeah, the, 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 the performance impact on the database, it's not uh, too much yet. Yeah? Of course, you need to check it always, but uh, according to, to the documentation, the performance impact is, is very low. Uh, and it's really easy to set it up on, on databases. Of course, in our case, I will use Azure SQL database, uh, the tier should be at least S3. Uh, in case of SQL, uh, SQL Server, um, I think it's available for most of the versions after 2014. Uh, okay, so let's move to the very quick demo because to set up it on, on Azure SQL database, it's, it's really easy. Uh, so let me open. I have very, very simple database with only two tables, but it's enough for us. Uh, it's totally enough for us. Uh, so how to set it up on database? Because it's, uh, yeah, so, so we are using the functions that, and, and stored procedures that are on database natively. So firstly, we need to run, uh, firstly, we need to run the stored procedure that enable the feature on the database. So one command, one easy command and it should be, it should be ready. Okay, that's nice. But uh, we need to make available this feature on each table uh, that we would like to cap uh, track the changes, yeah? So we have the start procedure when you point, hey, allow the change data capture on this specific table, yeah? So we need to provide the schema and the source name. And I can run it. Uh, sorry, because uh, unfortunately I don't see the... I need to make it smaller a bit and maybe that would be better. Okay. Okay, that's good. Seems that our functionality uh, is working. So the, the changes should be tracked. And you may ask, okay, so what's next? I would like to see the changes, uh, the new changes, old changes, or changes for specific period. How I should do it? Uh, so uh, for get the changes, we have a function. For each table where you allow the train data capture, uh, the special function will be created. In our case, it's dim scenario and special function is created. As you can see, we have three parameters. We have from LSN to LSN and uh, the, the, the third one. Uh, I will describe it later. 
So look, that it's not the timestamp, it's LSN, which means that it's a binary, binary value. Uh, so you cannot, uh, let's say, paste here the direct timestamp, but you have a function that will map you uh, map your timestamp to a specific LSN. So LSN is mm, a binary value. It, it's some kind of representation of timestamp, yeah? And you can use this function and uh, say, hey, give me the smallest value that is of LSN that is greater than uh, this date, yeah? And you will have the LSN. But in our case, for this proposal, I will just get all of the change, yeah? So let's run the uh, function, yeah? So select all values from this function from minimum, so the minimum possible LSN to maximum possible LSN. So take take all of the take all of the dates, uh, yeah, and run it. The text on parameter is related to the fact that you can get the data. I mean, you can get the records, but you can get the records with the information of the previous value. So if something was updated, you can have this information as well. It's empty. That's good because I didn't add anything to the database. I mean, to this table since I started this uh, change data capture. But let's try. Let's let's try to update it. Uh, I mean, insert the record with uh, value test fix and check if everything is working. Okay, run the procedure again. Yeah, we have something. And as you can see, we have only two columns, scenario key and name. That's good. Operation type, which is insert, that's fine. But let's modify the value and see if the change will be captured. Let's change it, update fix and run update, right? Very good, and check if we have it. Nice, so we have the, the new value of the record. That's good. As you can see, I am not using any where condition. I just get the changes. And of course, we can delete the record and the change should be there as well. So let's run delete statement and check if delete is captured as well. Sometimes we need to wait a bit, but in our case, the operation type one means that it's deleted. So this record was deleted. Very good. Uh, so seems that everything is working uh, now. And uh, we can move forward to our presentation. Uh, okay. So from this point of view, we can say that we set up the database and you can, of course, use many different tools because change data capture is not something new. You can use other data factory that is working with it. You can use another ETL tools that to get the data directly. But in our case, we will use Kafka Connect. Uh, yeah, and this solution uh, is for enterprise level companies. Yeah, so if you plan to build a data pipeline for small project or for medium company. Probably it won't be the best approach. We assume that our company is really big and we have Kafka on board and we have uh, many topics on Kafka. We have streaming data, I mean, we have streaming processing of the data and we have many different data sources, databases to get the data because this solution is uh, it's really scalable, so so you can uh, get massive amount of data and and put it to the Kafka, and after that you can put it to Data Lake, or if you would like, another consumers can consume this data uh, from Kafka. But what is Kafka Connect? Because we are talking about Kafka, Kafka is, is our message broker. So message broker just receive the message, and if you would like to get the message from this uh, service, you can get it. It is it's really simple solution. But to put the data to the Kafka, you need to prepare a producer. And in very straight and in very simple words, the producer is application or a process that puts the data into Kafka. But to create something like this, you need to code and use the libraries, which is fine, which is totally fine. However, if we have the database, we can use Kafka Connect. And Kafka Connect is a component of Kafka uh, where you can install the connectors and connectors are some kind of library that are uh, yeah that are prepared to get the data from the specific source system you need only to provide parameters so no coding just parameters to connection and that's all 
In our case, I will use the chain data capture connector for SQL database, for Azure SQL database. And I will use the second one connector uh, for Azure Data Lake Storage. So I will load the data to Kafka and load the data from Kafka to ADLS. Uh, what is very good uh, in this solution is that you have prepared connectors. So you don't really care about uh, about how it's working. I mean, in the internal, because in 90% your case is, uh, yeah, you can use the connector for your case and it will work. It's very simple. What's more, uh, the connection uh, between, I mean, you can really easily uh, script the changes. Uh, so if you have 100 tables or even more, it's very easy to add 100 tables and load all of them to Kafka and after that, load it to data lake. So our data pipeline will look very simple like this. Uh, like this. Yes, so we will have database and from the database, the data uh, via Kafka Connect will be loaded to Kafka and from Kafka to data, uh, Kafka Connect to the data lake storage. Uh, so let's go to the demo and I will show you firstly how to set up Kafka and Kafka Connect with Docker Compose. Of course, there are multiple ways how you can set up Kafka, uh, but I will show you very simple uh, Docker Compose file uh, because maybe if you don't have experience with Kafka and you would like to start with it, it I think that Docker Compose is, is really good way how you can start to, to play a bit with Kafka. Uh, one more information about this connector, because Kafka Connect, uh, it's only the cluster. To install this connector, the libraries, you need to download it firstly. You need to download it firstly. And uh, from where you can download it? Of course, from the vendor uh, websites, for example. I will use the Debezium connector, uh, which is for SQL Server, but not only for SQL Server, uh, it's as well for MySQL, MariaDB, and so on. Uh, but second connector that I will use is the Confluent uh, ADLS sync connector. So loading from Kafka to ADLS. And uh, the first one was free, but the second, uh, it's not free. Uh, you need to buy a license. But if you want to try how it's work, if, if it's okay for you, you can use it for 30 days and check uh, as a trial period and check. Yeah, after that, you contact Confluent and say that that uh, you would like to buy the license. Yeah, so uh, it's something uh, under consideration. But if you if you plan if you plan the project, you need to consider that some of the connectors are are paid. Yeah, and commercial use. Uh, what's a good thing is that uh, the documentation about the connectors is is really well. So so you can just move to the to the web page and and check it. So let's try again to, let's go again to Visual Studio Code. And I will show you the Docker Compose, uh, Docker Compose file. Uh, of course, our my containers are working, but uh, I will show you that it's really easy to set up uh, Kafka Connect and Kafka. Uh, if you are using Docker, of course, you need to have the images. Uh, so you need to have Zookeeper, our broker, so Kafka Server, Kafka Cluster. We won't use in this case schema registry, uh, but we will use, of course, the connect. And look what we need: the image. And image, I prepared it, uh, prepared the custom image because I just loaded the files, the connector files. Yeah, so so the Debezium connector and the ADLS uh, sync connector. Yeah, uh, so the image is uh, here but uh, you need as well to provide the plugin path. So you need to say, hey, Kafka Connect, here is the catalog here. Here, here is the two catalogs where my connectors are. When you will start, just load the connectors to your system and uh, thanks to it, we will be able to create the connectors. Uh, from the parameters, what is important, of course, you need to point where your Kafka is. Yeah, so I am working on local machine, so it's it's name of the name of the broker with the port, uh, and we need to provide the name of uh, topics because yeah, when Kafka Connect is working, uh, it needs to uh, yeah to make a checkpoints. Yeah, so I load that first 100 records from this uh, table, yeah? 
So it saves this data into into specific topic. Yeah, you to read it to not uh, yeah uh, write the same data twice or something like that. Of course, there is one topic for the status because some connector can fail and you will have information. Uh, we have many more uh, yeah properties, but I will focus only to make it simple. Uh, what's more, I add one one thing as well, which is very simple Kafka GUI, because normally in Kafka we are using CLI or REST API, but this GUI uh, will be good for, <clears throat> for the presentation because we will see that our records are loaded to Kafka. So yeah, my Docker is working, so, so I can start to work with Kafka Connect. How we are working with Kafka Connect? Uh, we are using the REST API in this case. Of course, it's possible to uh, to use it in different way, but but uh, I will use the REST API, uh, which is quite simple. Yeah, right. Because you need to just uh, run a curl statement, um, say where is the Kafka connect, choose the method, and provide the parameters. Yeah, and connector instance will be created. So the process will be started, and the data should be loaded from the database to Kafka. Look firstly that I need to provide obviously the name of the connector. I will use the different one name than the previously. And then I need to provide the connector class, right? Because we need to say, hey, use this library, SQL Server Connector. Then I need to provide a topic prefix. So when you load the data to Kafka, uh, each topic will be with this prefix, right? So if you would like to load the same uh, table twice or uh, three times, uh, you need to provide different topics to identify it. Uh, of course, the parameters to the database, how to connect to database, right? So username, password, and table include list. So you can say, hey, load this table. Of course, there is one more property called exclude. So if you'd like to get all of the tables, but exclude specific, you can exclude it in the list as well. Uh, I uh, as well said that, uh, hey, save the data as a JSON, as a JSON format, because you can use Avro. Uh, I am not talking too much about the schemas and so on. Uh, I would like to focus on setting up the Kafka, but yeah, if you would like to uh, keep the schema and, and uh, track the changes with schema, it's possible to use schema address with Kafka Connect as well. So uh, everything clear? I think we can run, I think we can run our uh, command. So as you can see, it's simple REST API. Of course you can use Postman uh, if, if you would like. I, I just using this terminal, the, the, the old fashioned way, but uh, it's fine for me. Uh, so let's try, uh, let's try if it's working, right? If our connector is working, because I just run it some statement and we don't know if it's working. But when you run a second command, connectors, the name of the connector and the status, you see that the connector is running and the task is running. It's important to check, uh, check it before because it could be a situation that the connector is running, but the task is not running for some reason, for example. Right, but for our point of view, everything is working. So let's try to see our uh, our topic. Let's firstly check if our topic was created. Yes, Kafka CDC 20 and Kafka CDC game scenario. So it looks like our topic and we have some data here. This is very good. Even the uh, schema is, is, is as well uh, good for us. So as you can see here is before value of this record and after value. We have more information here as well, but let's change to live tail and try to add something more. Yeah, so let's see if it's really working. So let's add the value 60 and insert and modify the value 60 with update 60, right? And run it, very good. So the first one record is created here. As you can see, it's insertion of the record, right? The operation is create and the scenario name and the scenario key before value is null because it's creation date, right? And after all, we have the new record. So we can see that before value was 
like this, the test 60 and after the changes, it was uh, 60, right? Uh, update 60, yeah, uh, which is good. So we can do some kind of historization in our data warehouse, yeah? Very good. So we have so we have set up the first part, uh, but uh, we would like to because Kafka is not the best uh, the best uh, service to store the data as a database, right? It, it's message broker, so we need to save the data for yeah for uh, to 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 uh, some kind of storage, yeah. We'll use Azure Data Lake Storage Gen second, yeah, to, to just store the data permanently there. So we need to set up the second connector. I will use uh, I will use the connector that is called uh, Azure ADLS Gen two sync connector. I will change the name here to point. Uh, yeah, and look, uh, the configuration is straightforward as well. Yeah. So we have the name of the class. So it's uh, yeah, it's what I uh, tell about uh, in previous. Uh, then we need to decide which topic we would like to get in, in this connector. I will use only one topic, but you can change the name. I mean, you can prepare the list of of the topics. It's not a problem, right? So it's it's not only yeah, it's very simple approach, but you can have uh, much many more uh, yeah. Uh, you need to point where the data will be saved. In my case, uh, to authenticate, because you need to authenticate, obviously, uh, to Azure Data Lake. So I am using the service principal, so app ID and app key. Uh, choose the data lake storage name, uh, where, I mean, the container name, so CDC says top serve. Uh, I need to prepare the, uh, yeah, I need to provide the tenant. And, yeah, and that's all. Let's try to run our connector, right? So run it. Okay, let's check as well if it's working, right? So very simple statement. Yeah, it seems that it's running. So let's go to my data lake and check. As you can see, it's only Kafka CDC 10, but after the refresh, uh, we should see 20. Let's see how my files are looking. So view the details. And we should see the JSON files, uh, sorry, the JSON messages. Yeah, and it's our message. That's good. That means that everything is working. But uh, to be sure, we can add uh, three more records, let's say. So 61, uh, for example, right, 62. 62 and 63, 63 and run it. Okay, and let's check if new file was created. Mm -hmm. Something is here. We should see 60, 61 and 62 uh, and 63 is missing. Why it's missing? Because we have a configuration uh here that is telling the flush size so uh three so we need at least three records to save the data right if we will not have three new records it won't be saved uh it's important configuration because uh, to don't have uh, many uh small files it's good to set it uh in optimal way right so 100 or 10000 or it depends how frequently uh, you would like to update, uh, insert the data. Yes, so seems that everything is working in our approach. Uh, we have JSON file here, so you can just run Databricks and start the analysis. So here is our bronze, for example, bronze layer. You can move it to silver, you can start to analyze. Uh, you can start to analyze the data. Uh, so that was the really simple uh, demo. Let's try to summary everything because uh, I understand that it could be, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, someone can say hi, why we are using Kafka and Kafka Connect. Uh, we can use very, I mean, simple tool or something like that. 
Uh, but yeah, Kafka Connect is a very good uh, approach because as you saw, everything is based on code. So if you would like to generate the connectors uh, for many source systems, multiple databases, it's not a problem. You just create a code and start it. And that's all. You can use the Terraform, of course, with Kafka connectors. So you can really easily generate it for a huge amount of of data and huge amount of uh, tables. Yeah, everything will be loaded to Kafka and Kafka is ready for a huge amount of data. So it's not a problem to load even tens of, of databases, right? In one place, everything will, will be in one place. Uh, I loaded everything into Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to the specific containers. But for example, if you have different uh, domains in your uh, in your company, you can create multiple uh, containers or multiple storage account and say that you can get the data from Kafka. Uh, you just need to point where it, it should be saved. Of course, I am not talking about the security of the data and GDPR and so on, but to make it simple, yeah, it's very easy to create another connector to get from Kafka. And we have this browse layer, if we talk about Medallion architecture, browse layer ready to use. Someone uh, from different division can use the data uh, really easy. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, uh, so it's for, let's say, bigger solution uh, when we have a very uh, huge amount of data. Uh, and as you, as you saw, uh, the change data capture is a native functionality in this case. So you just start and in, you have the data from database in near real time without any querying. Uh, without any ch manual checkpointing in database. Uh, so yeah, this is the proposition. Hope that uh, could be useful for you. Uh, or maybe you can you would like to start work with Kafka and Kafka Connect. Maybe it will help you with something. Uh, yeah, that's all that I prepared. Thank you.